Hey ladies and gents, it's Zen back, and we are doing the OH6 Cayuse. The, uh, this is the Generation 2 American um, Light Observation Helicopter, or LOH, uh, hence its name, um, nicknamed the Loach. Um, yeah, 1960s, uh, U.S. military put out a requirement for <laughs> A light observation helicopter that would be able to um, not only carry personnel, uh, stretchers, uh, observation, attack, uh, a little bit of everything. And there was, uh, you know, which kind of interesting in 1960 because in 19, I believe it was 1964, uh, the U.S. Army turned over all fixed-wing aircraft to the Air Force, and that's kind of. Yeah, maybe a little bit of um, looking into the future and going, yeah, we might have to start moving into the tilt rotor um, or into the helicopter scene. And then that's kind of what the, Air, uh, the um, U.S. Army did with the, uh, the Loach, and obviously the Huey and all the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, it's a little bit interesting. So the prototype flew in 1963. Um, Howard Hughes, uh, this is actually Hughes, uh, Hughes Helicopters, uh, was won the contract for this um, helicopter and uh, apparently underbid by quite a bit uh, and for the first production about 1417 of these helicopters Howard Hughes told a close friend of him friend of his that he lost almost a hundred million dollars uh, off this contract with the government producing the OH6 yeah, take it for what you, uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, obviously he was a multimillionaire himself, but, uh, yeah, he really wanted the contract, uh, so he underbid his competitors and apparently lost his ass on it, uh, and then later on when he was, uh, the next set of contracts came up for, uh, more airframes, um, he actually lost that because he had overbid it, so, <laughs> I don't, I, yeah, it's kind of an interesting little twist, uh, on the OH6 story. However, this helicopter was ridiculous. In 1966, it set 22 uh, helicopter directors, uh, rat records from speed to um, climb to altitude to distance. Yeah, it, it, it was ridiculous. It shook up the helicopter world uh, how good this uh, uh, light observation helicopter was uh, with, like, with the ability to do just about everything, good speed, good maneuverability, good climb, and, and of course, uh, pretty good range with this helicopter. Uh, yeah, it, it was almost the perfect mix uh, when it came to helicopter, it, it, to, the, to the point that it was still being, uh, variants of this are still being produced today, uh, and you can, uh, you know, obviously, uh, here's the MD-500, this one's still being produced. Uh, this is the uh, MH-6, uh, these are all descendants of the OH-6. Uh, this is the attack version of the uh, of the OH-6. Uh, uh, yeah, these things are still being produced uh, and still being used by the uh, military, uh, which is kind of interesting that uh, the, this aircraft design is as old as it is, uh, but still um, considered, uh, you know, a top-notch helicopter. Um, it had an interesting history in Vietnam. Uh, they lost 842 of these helicopters to enemy fire, roughly. Um, you know, obviously, they said majority, vast majority of these helicopters were lost to friendly fire. So, 842 of the 1,416, 17 odd, of, uh, odd helicopters were shot down in Vietnam. Um, but they were using, like I said, they were using it for everything. I mean, this was observation, um, crew transport, uh, you know, uh, removal of wounded, uh, and, and to a small degree, even the, you know the attack part of it. Uh, so, yeah, it was you know multi-purpose. Probably even more um, utilitarian than than, than the Huey uh, in in some regards. Um, the CIA used it in on some clandestine uh, operations. Uh, they actually did a, a wiretap uh, in Vietnam using two of these helicopters, uh, which is kind of interesting that you would do a wiretap. But apparently. Uh, I, it didn't sound like it was a terrible illegal operation. It sounded like they moved it, actually went into North Korea, or not North Korea, North Vietnam, and did the wiretap of these helicopters. Uh, they were also going to be used in the 1980 uh, hostage situation in Tehran. Uh, 
Iran didn't work out. The, the hostages were released before that. Uh, the special forces community loves this helicopter. Um, I believe if you use this one, the one right here, yeah. Uh, with the ability to carry four troops uh, along with the two um, pilots, uh, yeah, this, this is used quite extensively in the uh, special operations uh, community uh, because of its speed, its ability to land just about anywhere uh, and carry just about anything that you wanted to carry on a helicopter, this thing can do it. Uh, obviously, you know, my the OH-6 I use uh, in the game that I'll be showing you, uh, I have the 40 millimeter grenade launcher on it uh, and some Hydra 70 millimeter um, rocket pods uh, along with a mortar observer. I mean, yeah, this 40 millimeter is fucking dope. Uh, it, it is so much fun to use this thing. Um, yeah, so th that's an interesting little story. Still being produced, still used all over the world. Uh, Japan actually built, licensed, built something, almost 400 of these uh, OH-6s. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, the Navy used this helicopter. Uh, the Army used this helicopter. Uh, the Japanese used it. Uh, and everything from search and rescue to, you know, yeah, it, it was just such a, a great design uh, that the fact that it's been, you know been around since roughly 1963 and it's still being used uh, you know obviously everything's been upgraded rotors and engines and all that stuff but for the basic design of the helicopter uh, it just doesn't get any better than this thing so with that said so what do we have in game um uh, in this form the OH-6 you know it's, it's almost entirely just used as a, a observation helicopter you do get one grenade launcher or um, 14 Hydra missiles or you can pick the other configuration where you'll get a uh, 7.62 uh, minigun uh, with a rocket pods of seven on the other side uh, I prefer the grenade launcher over the um, over the uh, machine gun entirely up to you of course uh, yeah it's just a it's just an all-around uh, sweet looking machine um, you know, if you if you ever watch Magnum PI, <laughs> this was a Magnum PI. That would be awesome if we could get that paint job uh, in this game. <laughs> uh, for the soldiers, uh, only carries for one total seat. You can carry one passenger uh, in this configuration. Uh, obviously, when you get up into the, um, you know, up into here, it does change a little bit. Uh, you'll get four seats. Uh, you know, obviously, this is a newer version of this helicopter. But the original OS H6, uh, you only get one soldier. Uh, for defense, uh, we just get the uh, flare decoy dispensers, and of course, camo is the default camo that is applied to the air, uh, the uh, air, uh, blah, 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 applied to the helicopter. So yeah, um, this is of course a generation two helicopter. Uh, I'm starting to kind of work up the line a little bit here, but I, this is actually one of my fun, real fun aircraft to play. Uh, you know, it's very quick, very maneuverable. Uh, and it does a lot of things that's, you know, the little things in the game to get the objectives uh, that makes it so much fun. So, I'm going to bring up the gameplay for you. I'm going to be playing with uh, one of my clan mates. I can. You've seen some of his videos on, the, on uh, World of Warplanes. Uh, so now we're playing uh, some uh, helicopters tonight. So, uh, good night, guys. All right, guys, back with the gameplay in the OH6. I am playing with Can Grunt, and he was kind enough to let me play Scout Helicopter while he was doing some of the transport and the attack helicopter roll of it. So, um, literally with its ability to, uh, you know, at relatively quick speed, uh, you know, I, I'm playing this kind of uh, uh, the first objectives here. I'm just supporting him. I, I, I'm giving him cover. He's going to drop here in a nine. Um, I am just giving him cover for, you know, uh, ground troops, uh, vehicles and whatnot. Once again, kind of more of a, you know, with, with a light helicopter, being able to escort, <coughs> excuse me, um, transports, uh, you know, it's kind of a, a duty, I guess, maybe you want to call it, or at least how we're playing the game. Uh, keeping him safe uh, off of uh, uh, worrying about uh, ground troops firing at him and all that kind of stuff. You can kind of, kind of hear him in the background talking. Uh, we were trying to uh, come up with some tactics for uh, this, uh, the, uh, the, tier f the uh, working together with the, uh, the, 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 
scout helicopter. I'm fucking stuttering tonight for some reason. Working with the with uh, with the scout helicopter and him working with the transport. So now you see our we got uh, capture three, uh, which is under fire right now, and, and this yeah. is kind of what the scout helicopters do. That's exactly. Uh, you know they uh, they should be the ones that be uh, moving in uh, ahead of either the attack helicopter or in front of the transports. Uh, you know to clear the way. Um, uh, with AA positions and man pads and all that kind of stuff because uh, with the uh, observer uh, you have a little bit better view range here so I'm gonna pop the hill here I'm coming in uh, low over the top of the hill right here uh, and I'm just gonna set up here um, he had dropped some mortars for me with his transport uh, you know in here I'm just checking three out just to make sure there's nothing here uh, so when he comes in here to take it so it picked up some uh, some baddies here he's coming in right in behind me here uh, and my job uh, with the 40 is of course to clear out uh, these uh, enemy troops uh, while he comes in with the transport here so I'm starting to work over the troops pretty hard uh, that's what I love about the 40 uh, you don't have to be quite as accurate uh, with the uh, 40 compared to the uh, uh, machine guns um, however I have a little bit of trouble uh, hitting some shit here uh, finally finished him off. He's <laughs> he uh, he come in hot. Uh, he got a little bit uh, uh, yeah he got he got shot up a little bit here. So now he's just pulling out of the uh, <laughs> talk about burning. So he's pulled out. We've captured three. Uh, picked up the objective here. So now I'm gonna be off uh, looking for the next thing. He's uh, RTB right now, uh, returning to base. So uh, he can uh, pick up his next helicopter here. Uh, I still have my 14 missiles and, of course, my grenade launchers up. Plus, I have mortars out and about here. So I'm uh, heading over here to see if I can find and destroy enemy vehicles in the marked area, as well as Zone 7 and 8 enemies en route from 8. So, uh, yeah. And I, I really, since I don't have any... Uh, ATGMs, um, anti-tank guided missiles, uh, dealing with some of these uh, armored targets are a little bit of a pain. However, I do have mortars, so yeah, you know, this is exactly what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to pull in here. Uh, I'm going to get set up here. They have an armored convoy coming from 8 to 7, uh, so I'm just pulling in here, here real slow, uh, setting up. I'm going to pick up the, uh, try to start spotting these guys coming in from 8 to 7 here. There we go. So, since I don't really have much to deal with these guys other than my uh, mortars, uh, I'm kind of requiring a little bit of, uh, since I know I'm uh, the mortar crew here is relatively close, uh, I don't have to do much of a lead here. Uh, so, the main, usually with these armored convoys, there's always the tank in the front, and he is a bitch to kill. Uh, mortars really don't do a whole lot to him. Um, however, the lightly armored vehicles are a little bit different here. So, I start using my rockets. Start nailing the uh, tank. Pick up the uh, assist on that. Finish him off, uh, and of course we pick up the objective. All done. Uh, you know, and that's kind of the utility of this helicopter in this game. Uh, with its ability with the mortars, uh, with the rockets, and the grenade launchers too. I mean, you don't obviously don't want to run in and fucking try to see if you can fuck up tanks with it. Uh, but lightly armored vehicles, uh, troop concentrations, uh, that kind of stuff. Uh, that's its bread and butter with this helicopter. You know, it's, it's got a good top speed. Um, not quite as some of the as fast as the uh, attack helicopters or the transports, but quick enough to get you from one part of the battlefield to the other. So pull back in here. Um, I need some more rockets. I need some more ammunition uh, for my grenade launchers. Uh, pull in here. Let's see if I don't fucking die. Dope this up a little bit here. There we go. Sometimes you lose a little bit. You know, you, you don't play this thing for a month, and then all of a sudden you get back in, and you're like, huh. So, picked up my uh, rockets, got my grenade launcher completely full, and we're kind of discussing a little bit of what we should do here for tactics and where and when we're going to be going here. So, objective, we failed one objective. Um, going up into six would be almost a suicide mission because it's... Uh, with the AA positions at 6 and 7, 8 and 5, you can't really sneak in there without getting your shit shot up. So, support convoy from 10 to 8. 
and that means that the convoy here is left 10 uh, and currently on its way to 8 here so I'm going to try to move into position on 8 uh, and pick up um, some AA positions. Uh, Can is moving in here slowly but sh uh, maybe not slowly but surely here uh, so we got the three AA positions. He's brought in the uh, Cobra uh, and he nails two, three of them right before he fucking <laughs> rice patties it right into the ground. <laughs> Excuse me. So we've picked up eight, uh, knocked out all of the uh, the baddies here, uh, and right now currently we have a convoy from ten coming to eight. Hopefully this will finish off our. Uh, objective um, and uh, we'll get some more points out of the deal. Yep, here comes our convoy. They're going to cross here. Uh, I'm just going to fly a little cover right now. Um, you know, I, I, that once again, utility helicopter, uh, if you got to do it, you got to do it. And this thing's able to do a lot of that stuff. Uh, you know, uh, stopping um, convoys of uh, armored vehicles like that, uh, you don't quite have the firepower unless you have, uh, of course, the mortars up and then you can uh, for example, when you nail at least one of them, anything behind it uh, is going to stop. So while I wait for him to move in here, uh, completely into eight here, I'm going to pop up over the ridge here slowly but surely uh, and start picking off some of the AA mounts. Um, he's uh, yeah, rolling solo, uh, or AKA can, uh, has dropped his mortar crews. So every time I'm using his mortar crews, he's getting XP. So it kind of works out pretty nice for us. Uh, pull up here. I get the kills. Uh, he gets the uh, XP from the the use of his mortars. So I've knocked out two AA positions. Working on the third one here. Sometimes I get a little uh, maybe maybe the words for it is uh, impatient. Uh, that's why sometimes you see me double click on the uh, the um, uh, mortars. So of course there's a fucking man pad. There's always a man pad. Um, yeah, so bring up the 40s. Uh, we're going to see if we can start nailing some of these guys, and they don't ever miss. Uh, around we go here. Now, I'm right on target here, and I don't can't figure out why the fuck he's not dying. Uh, or him. Yeah, he, they, they are they're fucking Terminators, I guess. So, fuck it. I switched to the Hydras. Uh, yeah, there we go. That's a little different here. And I know there's one more up here, I thought. But we picked off two heavy machine guns and one soldier eliminated, so not too bad. Now, I got a convoy coming in um, from 4 to 8 here. I'm going to pull back. I still have mortars up here, and this is kind of where you got to get a little bit, uh, once again, know where your mortar crew's at, and I have a rough idea how far uh, or how long it takes for the mortars to land. Um, I don't have a completely clear sight, but I do have a pretty good idea. Uh, yeah, there we go. And I'm trying to do here is, like I said, the lead tank is usually the uh, the lead vehicle is usually a heavily armored tank. Uh, so that's why you're seeing me lead out so far, uh, waiting for the mortars to hit. So now I've nailed uh, three light tanks in between the column, which stops the last guy. Um, I'm not going to waste any more mortars on him. I'm just going to switch to the hydras uh, and start working him over. Now, unfortunately, this being a... Um, you know, uh, actual tank uh, requires a few more thing, a few more rockets here. I'm gonna just nail him. I'm, I've nailed him with like five fucking rockets, but they're only 70 millimeters, and of course he is a main battle tank, so a little harder to get rid of. Looking around here, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. Uh, try to get in here behind him here, pick up the hydras, put a couple shells into his rear, can't quite get it. So you know, I've switched to the 40s millimeters. Which, you know, uh, and the back deck uh, does a pretty nice job uh, of finishing him off. So, picked up that objective, 512 right now, uh, and it's not looking too shabby for us. Uh, you, you're going to get out what you get out of these utility light helicopters by what, how you play it. Um, you know, uh, typically if you want to just play straight up light helicopter, observation helicopter, you're not going to be doing some of the shit I'm doing here. However, since I do have the ability, uh, to do some of this stuff, to obviously take on convoys and stuff like that with mortars. That's what you're going to see here. So he's pulled in here with his H1 Cobra. Uh, he's cleared out four. Um, we have 
uh, to pick what we're trying to do here is get into this area where we have find and destroy enemy infantry in the marked area um, if four wouldn't have been destroyed we would have to fly through a pretty much a gauntlet of uh, anti-aircraft so find our first set of troops right here they're down here in the, the rice paddies I picked out the two RPGs and one soldier uh, and of course we picked up the objective completed however I'm still getting the shit shot out of me because uh, of two um, can drops in with the uh, Cobra uh, sprays some freedom around and uh, rockets the shit out of the uh, AA uh, so we've knocked out two and four right now with six being under attack by uh, some uh, enemy uh, infantry man pad up and running I get nailed drop me to 14 percent so I'm not in a good position here uh, to do much here so I'm gonna try to get the fuck out of here uh, and RTB back to um, base uh, to repair rearm uh, and then get back out there to help um, can uh, keep up his pressure on the uh, the north objectives so now they've added some stuff uh, with the evacs which is kind of cool uh, but since I was doing the video here I didn't really switch over to the uh, transport helicopter to do the evac missions uh, I was just more like some more interested in getting these uh, showing you what the OH-6 can do which is by far one of my favorite aircraft to fly, easily one of my favorite air helicopter uh, it might actually be my favorite helicopter uh, like I said with the utility of it um, it's pretty impressive when you get up a little bit further into the the AH models and stuff like that when you start uh, MD5 you start carrying more um, passengers you carry up to four uh, then it becomes a little bit easier to then you can actually take some of these objectives uh, you know you have the you, you take with the four troops you have the mortar observer um, plus rocket pods and all that kind of stuff becomes kind of a kind of a badass really so find and spot enemies one more uh, or just one uh, defending landing zone five um, where he's at right now he is actually currently working on that so uh, yeah there he finishes uh, and nails that so now we have two extracts uh, for um, soldiers uh, I don't uh, he's like I said uh, he's not um, playing anything but uh, the transports and the attack so he's actually picking up a transport uh, and I'm going to escort him into uh, the area where to uh, where the uh, the extraction is going to be uh, needed pick up 11 I thought well let's see if we can uh, knock out some of these light ta uh, light uh, uh, AA uh, vehicles light armored vehicles here so I was like ah, I'm not gonna waste any more mortars on it I got some rockets here. We're just going to make a quick pass through there. Uh, didn't hit shit other than the ground. However, lightly armored vehicles really don't have a problem uh, with the 40s. Uh, you kind of kind of got to lob that sucker in there. But once you do, like I said, it, the 40 millimeter does a real nice job on lightly armored vehicles. Finish off three of the four. <coughs> pull around. One more to go. And that, of course, is the main battle tank. So I'm not quite got enough. Uh, firepower out to get to his rear, uh, but uh, Can has showed up here with his AH Cobra gunship, uh, so he's going to do a number on him uh, with that bigger caliber gun and <coughs> um, rockets and whatnot. However, drop down uh, 40 millimeter, uh, 40 millimeter grenades to the rear of just about any tank will go boom. So we picked that up, and now we are rolling back to objective here. I'm uh, returning to base to rearm. Uh, he's going to pick up the uh, transport helicopter, uh, and then we're going to go. I'm just going to escort him to uh, the uh, the zone um, to clear anything that's could possibly going there. Here. So we picked up a UH. We've actually picked up another player now, Texas Red, uh, in the UH-1D Huey. So I'm going to drop down here. He's going to switch out his helicopters. Oh, that's a badass looking, uh, badass looking, uh, Cobra. So, I'm sorry, I picked up the CH. Yeah, there we go. My bad. I'm actually going to be flying the CH. So, uh, we'll just skip ahead here a little bit here. 
and we're gonna drop the troops in here for the last part of the video so hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, yeah uh, give it give Halliburton a chance it's a fun game